Hi, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to change the timing circuit of the PIR motion detector. Now these PIRs already have a timing adjustment, but in the case of this one, it's too short. For example, it only gives me about 5 minutes, which is too short. I'd like to make it more like 10 or even 15 minutes. Now just to explain what this device does, these are two other PRRs. These are ceiling mount PRRs, which means you mount them in your ceiling like that. And there's another one, a smaller one. And this is also a ceiling mount one, but I've now opened it, as you can see. And what it does is it detects motion. So when there is motion, it will then activate a relay to switch on a light. Right, so in this circuit, I've connected a light there and I've wired it to my PRR and my PRR is fed from my electrical supply. So what happens is when there's motion, as you can see, I'm putting my hand in front of the PRR and you can see it activated the light. So in this case, this is short timing, meaning that the time that is allotted for the maximum setting is too short and I'm going to show you how to manually change that. Right, now I've disconnected this from the supply and I'll just show you inside here. Now I've already opened mine and the electricity is now off so there's no shock hazard while I work on this and obviously there is an adjustment which you can manually change the timing sequence. For example that would be the maximum which will give me that five minutes and then going down to the minimum I'm getting not even 20 seconds. So this is too short and I'd like this to be at least 10 minutes. So this is the point of this video. Now on this circuit you'll see I've got two potentiometers. Now here is a variable resistor. This is a slightly bigger one, does the same thing. This is a smaller one. And what it does is it allows you to vary the resistance between the two terminals. What that does is it changes the time duration that allows the light to be on. And if you're wondering why there's another variable resistor here, well that is to do with the lux sensitivity. If you only want the PRR to activate in the night or if you wanted to activate even in the daytime you would adjust the lux sensitivity and the lux sensitivity works hand in hand with this LDR which is a light dependent resistor. Right now there is the infrared sensor and that detects the motion and then here is the resistor which I use to change the amount of time that the load will stay activated for or in this case the glow will be lit for that amount of time. Now what I've done is I've just inspected the circuit and I can see that the timer is using a basic RC circuit, R meaning resistor and C meaning capacitor. Now in this particular circuit it's quite difficult to change the capacitor so all I'm going to do is change this resistor. Now when I've looked at the circuit what I've noticed is that this resistor is actually just a variable resistor with two terminals even though it's got three terminals and what they've done is they've shorted out the two pins. There is a rating on the side here telling you the resistance but you can also measure it with a ohmmeter. Right so here is my multimeter and I'll just show you I'm going to measure the resistance between the leads which should be a short circuit and as you can see it's giving me 0.1 ohms telling me it's a dead short and now if I measure the resistor you will see that on pins say 1 and 2 you can see it's a short. If I go from pin 1 and 3, it's also showing me a short. And the reason being is because I've already rotated the variable resistor to the minimum. Now I'm going to rotate it midway. So that's about midway and I'll show you the resistance. If you have a look there, you can see that it is 406 kilo ohms. And if I go all the way, so this would be the highest resistance. And now you can see it is now almost, well, it's supposed to be one mega ohm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this potentiometer by desoldering it and I'm going to swap it for a bigger one. So in this case, I have a two mega ohm potentiometer. I don't quite have the same size, so I could use this or I could just use a resistor and then measure the on time until I'm happy with it. So in this case, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a resistor and therefore I won't be able to vary it. In your case, you might just want to go and locate a larger value potentiometer. So for example, this one is one mega ohm. You might find a two mega ohm, which potentially should double the on time. But that does depend on the layout of this timer. Not not all timers are the same and just because you increase the resistor or double the resistance doesn't mean you are doubling the on time. However, I think that in this particular case it will do that. Having inspected the circuit it seems like that is the way it is wired. Alright, so this one is a 2 mega ohm. So if my on time was only 5 minutes, if I double the resistance I should be having an on time of 10 minutes. So I'm going to remove this now. Right, now I have a soldering iron, so all I'm going to do is desolder this potentiometer.
Right, now closely inspecting the circuit board, while the potentiometer was soldered on this side, none of these pins are actually connected to anything on this side. But on the other side is where you can see the layout. So what I'm seeing there is there we have, I had pin 1 and pin 2. You see they are actually shorted out. So all that was happening is between pin 2 and pin 3 was where the varying of the resistance took place. So all I need to do is now insert a resistor from that hole to that hole and then I will effectively have changed the timing sequence. Now I only have a 2.2 mega ohm resistor because that is the standard amount. Now obviously you could do trial and error tests but I'm just going to double it will slightly more than double it and I'm going to now insert this resistor over here and then measure how long the timer stays on for. Right so I've now changed the 1 mega ohm variable resistor with a 2.2 mega ohm fixed value resistor and now I'm going to switch it on and test it. Right now I've turned it on and as you power it up it does automatically turn on the globe. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover this so that it doesn't keep picking up my body heat while I'm moving around here. So I'm just going to put this to the side so it's out of the way and then I'm now going to time it using a stopwatch. Alright so it stayed on for 12 minutes and 16 seconds as opposed to about 5 minutes so that solves my problem. What you could have done is just lifted the leg and then still had your variable resistor here but just lifted the leg and then connected this leg to that terminal over there and then maybe put a 500 kilo ohm or even a mega ohm resistor but then still having the variable resistor here giving you the option to vary it if you would like to. But in my case this is going back into the ceiling and I'm happy with the 12 minute on time that is much better than the 5 minute. So in this video all I wanted to show you was how to override the very short timing sequence of this PRR motion detector. Right, there we go. And now all I have to do is go and reinstall this back in the roof. Thanks for watching and cheers.